drive on the other side of the road when you live over there. You are stealing my house. And if I don't steal it, someone else is going to steal it. No, no one, no one is allowed to steal it, yammy. You are stealing my house. And if I don't steal it, someone else is going to steal it. No, no one, no one is allowed to steal it, yammy. Jacob, you know this is not your house. Yes, but if I go, you don't go back. So what's the problem? Why are you yelling at me? I didn't do this. I didn't do this. But you, it's you, easy to yell at me, but I didn't do this. Yeah, you are stealing you. my house. You know this is not your house. Yes, but if I help you, the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood is home to some 3,000 Palestinians, many of whom are are descendants of people who were forced out of what is now Israel during the ethnic cleansing of 1948. Israel has been ordering the eviction of Palestinian families that we evicted who've lived in the Sheikh Jarrah for generations. A total of 58 Palestinians, including 17 children, are under threat of being forcibly displaced to make way for Jewish citizens. Palestinians are calling to save Sheikh Jarrah on social media. You are stealing my house. And if I don't steal it, someone else is going to Fucking destitution. It's so depressing. I'm always sick. I'm always, I don't know. I can't do anything. You see all of this. What, what do you expect me to do? Fix it? I'm only 10. I can't even do anything in this morning. I just want to be a doctor or anything to help my people, but I can't. I'm just a kid. I don't even know what to do. I get scared, but not really that much. I get, I do anything for my people, but I don't know what to do. I'm just 10. I'm just 10. All of this, when I see it, I literally cry every day. And they need to live on their own. Saying to myself, I mean? why do we deserve this? And why, this shit what did we do to this? Is gonna push people towards Hamas. My family said they just, they, they just when hate you do us. This they to just people, don't like it's us push because we are Muslims. Terrorism. When why they have does nothing Muslims to live for, act for you like they that? They have clean water, food, <laughs> nothing just, to live for. You see all of the kids around me? They're just kids. It's gonna why push them to fucking terrorism. You to fucking kill them. disgusting Israeli government. It's not fair. It's fucking disgusting, dude. It's I not swear fair. to God. I swear to God, I can't. I, I can't even believe that this is happening. I, I literally can't believe that this is happening. And our government's standing behind it because he doesn't want to lose a fucking election. Which I agree, you know, Trump is a fascist, but Jesus Christ, what's going on with the world nowadays, dude? What is going on? I don't get it. I really don't know what's going on. It's really, it's really sad. <clears throat> Let's look at some more footage of how people live in Palestine. This is what I experienced minutes after setting foot in my family's hometown. We literally just got here. We went through the first military checkpoint and a bunch of soldiers stopped us, started yelling at us. I'm in the old city of Hebron in the occupied West Bank, a place that once bustled with life. But I'm about to see what Israel's occupation and settlers have done to the heart of this city. And to the people who live here. I'm a Palestinian-American journalist, and I've spent much of my career reporting on the occupied territories. 
But Hebron, one of the West Bank's largest cities, is also my roots. My father was born and raised here. I've returned to learn how the occupation has decimated his beloved hometown, a place he hasn't been back to in years. I had a mixed feeling, uh, nostalgia with anger, and despair over despair, what can I say? I know it's really hard for him to see this, and so it's emotional for me. So we're officially on our way to Hebron. My team and I are going to Hebron's old city, which is ground zero of Israeli apartheid. Today, 33,000 Palestinians live in this part of Hebron, which is under full Israeli military control and fragmented by checkpoints, military outposts, and around 1,000 Israeli settlers who live here in violation of international law. Oh, it's difficult. And it's difficult to sit in a place and try to sit in a place. We're living here just in the sense of prison. But before we get into all of that, let me back up. It wasn't always like this. This is my dad. He was born in Hebron in 1947. He lived up the hill from the old city, where his father and uncle owned a quarry. The year after my dad was born, Israel was established in what Palestinians refer to as the Nekba, or catastrophe. That's because hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were expelled from their homes to clear the way for the creation of a Jewish state. But the West Bank, including Hebron, fell under the control of Jordan. My dad was 19 in June of 1967, when Israel captured the West Bank, Gaza, East Jerusalem, and the Golan Heights, and began a military occupation that still has no end in sight. My dad was in college in Jordan at that time, so he wasn't in Hebron to witness that or to see how Jewish settlers took over parts of the old city. A few years later, he moved to the U.S. for graduate school. I was born and raised in San Francisco and grew up hearing my dad reminisce about his childhood, like how he raised chickens and rabbits on the hill as he watched the vibrant city below. When my family would travel to Palestine in the summers, my dad couldn't come because of work. Now, even though he's retired, he says he doesn't want to return because he refuses to be humiliated by Israeli soldiers. He's only been back to Hebron three times. But I'm returning to see with my own eyes what has become of this city that made my father and me who we are today. And that all begins with me actually getting there. It's only about 20 miles from Ramallah where we're starting out. But we can't, as Palestinians, access parts of the main north-south highway because that's reserved exclusively for cars with Israeli license plates. So here's another checkpoint. Instead, we have to take narrower roads and cross through several Israeli military checkpoints. There's another checkpoint. That means it takes much, much longer to get there. We're finally in Hebron. I'm sure my dad knows these streets inside and out, and he used to walk all over here as a child, so this is literally retracing his footsteps, but it's very different now than, than when he grew up. Today, many parts of the city are off limits to Palestinians. All right, gonna go through. Because I'm Palestinian, I'm not allowed to enter parts of the old city. So I'm meeting former Israeli soldiers who, I hope, will help me access my family's hometown. Hi, how are you, Ori? Nice to meet you, I'm Dina. Ori and Joel are with the Israeli anti-occupation group Breaking the Silence. They used to serve in the Israeli army, but now they give tours of Hebron to expose the reality of how Israel treats Palestinians. Come, come here, come here. But before they could even start showing me around, this happened. Huh? <laughs> My Palestinian film crew, who have the proper credentials, are sadly used to experiencing this kind of nationalistic harassment and taunting. So I've been in the old city for about five minutes and we were already stopped by... We literally just got here and a bunch of soldiers stopped us, started yelling at us started harassing my cameraman. They just asked to see our ID. 